I can represent to you that we qualify under the statutes as having 20 plus, 20 to 160 contiguous acres under single ownership. I think that's kind of a baseline to get there. So, um, that's my request. That's why I'm here. And I, I guess I would, if you want more information or uh, need more information to kind of evaluate what I'm asking, understand it, I can try to share it, or I can bring it back in another meeting, however you want to approach it. Did Tracy? Go ahead. Absolutely. Did Tracy give you an idea of what the amount would be? Um, no. I mean, we've done some calculations, but. Um, I mean, the first number that was thrown out was near 100, but it's it's nowhere near that. I can assure you that based on my, I can just do the math in my head, figure that out. But you know, Tracy Tracy told me last I spoke to her, which wasn't that long ago, um, after she left, she uh, she said that a spreadsheet was actually she actually reprinted invoices out uh, in the department and was about half the stack. She spent several days over the Fourth of July doing that, and. Uh, and then had a spreadsheet prepared. I think the spreadsheet was prepared by Wanda. Uh, I think she's involved in there. She's been the newly appointed lead appraiser here, I think. If that's, is that correct? Oh, uh -huh. yeah. there was a Wanda Nelson. A Wanda? Was the, a Wanda, do you know? I have no idea. All right, we, Department of Revenue uh, lost their two local representatives, so right. county's kind of not sure what the what's going on and who's going to be down here, so we don't know yet. Okay, but well, Wanda, it's my understanding it's Wanda, and okay. Wanda, and so the, and the, <coughs> apparently there was a spreadsheet that detailed the, the amount, so to answer your question, I, I don't know the exact amount, um, you know, and I, honestly, it's 40 lots, we pay somewhere between 250 and 300 a lot, um, if it's... Per half or per year? Um, you know, initially I think it started out around 200 per year. It's up to about 320 per year, you know, based on the, uh, the progression. Uh, how do they do that? They, they did adjust on the levy and obviously kind of progressing it back into the full taxation. The, uh, so it's, uh, it, it's somebody would have to sit down and do that spreadsheet, which I think they did, and it went to a guy at the Department of Revenue in Rocky. His name would now somewhat. And so he can probably um, tell you how much that would be. Uh, I don't I have I I can go on the online records, but I don't have the exact amount. Okay. I mean he has thirty thousand, that's my guess. But somewhere between thirty and fifty. Okay. Um Dave Dave Smith. Correct. Had called and he said uh, I was going from about I think he said two fifty nine to twenty nine. Per lot would be the difference in the taxes. Yeah. So I don't know if that was a guesstimate on his part or if he had an actual lot he was looking at from the spreadsheet. Yeah, we, he wouldn't have the spreadsheet, but that would that would have been a day's recollection of what we would be. You know, it was platted in 2006, and so when we were non qualified ag, we were paying probably $29 would be about right per lot. And then in 2009, going forward, this one kicked up, and it was 200 per year. I mean, I, can, I have assessment notices that show the 200 figure, and it, the lots vary slightly because they're all really three acres. Um, but it's some, that would be a ballpark, 30 going up to 200 to now 320 over the last four or five years. So, um, and I just recently got the letter from, or the, I got I get a stack of all the notices showing the Department of Revenue acknowledging that misclassified, reclassified, it shows the, you know, some of the information, which I, I happen to have with me if you need it right now. But I think if you authorize it, it can, you know, it can be determined how much that would be. I mean, I know it's not insignificant, so I need to sure. figure it out. We, we have a number of questions on this, and, and we expect you won't be the first, well, you are the first, but we expect you won't be the only subdivider coming forward asking for a refund. So what we, uh, we talked about this this morning, what we uh, would like to do is take this to our planning board, since this is a planning issue, 
and um, present to them what some of our questions are and have them put together parameters, um, justifications, a uh, list of um, examples, why we would, why we wouldn't type of scenarios, and then have something solid that we follow on this so that it isn't a willy-nilly shoot from the hip answer that we give to you on Monday and somebody else on Tuesday. We have an actual structure that we're following. So that may take a little bit of time. We are meeting with the planning board on Wednesday here in just two days. Um, but at that point, I expect that we will be able to get back to you, either have you come to a meeting uh, or work via email and let you know what that structure is and what that means for your particular subdivision. Okay. Um, Department of Revenue guesstimated that if everybody got 100% of the um, refunds they're requesting, it would be $73,000 from the county. I don't know if that's per year. I don't know if that's total. Um, and Department of Revenue has been wrong on an awful lot of things. Um, one of the things they said is that we can tax the citizens to cover these. Yeah. That's not true, nor do we want to, right. but they don't always understand local mm -hmm. government issues like they do state revenue right. issues. So we want to take it to the experts, which is the planning board, and um, get some parameters from them. Okay. So did I miss anything? Do you guys no. want to add anything? I wonder we shouldn't uh, drop the Tracy on it too. Tracy quit. Oh, she did? Tracy walked out. Mm -hmm. We no longer have a Tracy. Walked out. Yeah. Oh. No, and I am ironic. And, and just. She did. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, uh, the only thing I'd like to, you know, when you're formulating a plan, I mean, I, I, I can pull, I pull up all the subdivisions that are, are in your southern part of the county, whether it's to run and I mean they're all unless the ownership has changed from the developer to a private third party on a lot particular lot they're almost uniformly uh, taxed as a class 3 non-qualified A so I mean in your consideration I'd ask you to consider also the fairness of it I mean we've we've had we've had to borrow to to maintain status quo on you know for this reason while other subdividers and other People that have chosen to do that with their land have, have paid the lesser amount. So I just, just, I know there's probably questions that could be formulated, but um, I guess the other question is, can you, if you're gonna, if you would have deny our request, you, when you say there's gonna be other people coming in, quite frankly, I don't, everybody else is probably happy status quo, because they're, for example, West Side Trails is paying $5, pretty much $5 a lot per year to, retain their 50 lots over there as a developer. And it obviously is not there. So, and I, I could go down Mountain Vista, go fix and paste when you had it. You paid the nominal amount for non-qualified A, plus three. Uh, the one that has a lot of houses in it, it's actually kind of surprising is the Mountain Vista right off the freeway there. It's all non-qualified A, it's owned by their, by their developer. And, and we hear that. Of course, there's other arguments that, that you know, we also have to be hearing, and that is from the other citizens. Um, so that's what we want to put to the planning board is, how do we make a decision that's equitable to everyone, yeah. all the be developers? Excused, I got an appointment. Yeah. I'm there expected to be here this long. Sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, but what we want to do is, is have the planning board put all the pieces out on the table, what's equitable for everyone, not just the developers, but area businesses, residents who've lived here for you know 100 years. Um, how, how do we address this in a way that's fair to all of them? Because they're the ones picking up the slack. Um, also, how do we make a decision that that's, doesn't put Broadwater County in a position of being unfriendly to business? we're not. Um, so we need to be balancing all those different pieces and then come up with the decision that is the most sensible for everybody. Uh, that's you guys as well as our citizens as well as our businesses. So there's a lot of moving pieces that we need to get a handle of mm -hmm. and um, kind of 
probably have some good heated discussions to come to a decision on. Okay. So Are you, um, and I, I think it was yourself, but I, this, the legal, have you, some, I was pointed to several statutes. Are you privy to refund statutes? All right, do you want me to bring that to your attention now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we do have a few, um, but you may have some more that we need to I, I probably, I was pointed to 1516-603. Yeah. Yeah, which basically gives it, makes it your authority. I put in some board county commissioners shall order refund on tax and only interest collected as a result of error and descriptions determined by Department of Revenue. And then the refund, and then subsection uh, 3D of that uh, statute says the refund required under 1C, which is what I just summed up for you, must be made for five years for the duration of the error. So um, I, my position on that was is that it's a, if the error was acknowledged, as I believe it was in the recent communication we have with the department, it's, a, it's not a not a discretionary decision, it's a, if you will, it's, it's a shall um, decision. So that's one statute I'd point you to, not trying to tie your hands to that, but I, I do want to, when you talk about the variety of interests involved, I appreciate the fact, you know, we've been a good citizen. I mean, our, as a developer, and David Smith would remind me to mention, you know, that we did, we contributed on the road, we were significant in making sure that that, ha you know, that issue is the last time himself here and that we were very cooperative paying our fair share for the road that was constructed out there and more helping cooperate on this street other people getting involved despite other <coughs> factors that, despite the fact that we probably didn't have to we did as we felt that it was beneficial to everyone. I will tell you that they did bring that up on the phone and there have been some developers who've been very good neighbors, very good to work with. I think our planner would agree to that. We've also had developers that haven't been. And when there's a blanket, you have you know, if we set a precedent to saying yes, then we have to just say yes to everybody. Well, then that you know, that that it, it washes out your argument. You right. Know, that you guys have been good neighbors. That's I think we all agree on that. And, certainly appreciate that and again we want to make a informed decision so that we honor what you guys did and being good neighbors but we still have to make sure that whatever we end up doing that it is the best most thought through decision right. um, to shoot from the hip yeah. it might have worked decades ago but we're in a new world well so I, I, and I appreciate that I, I honestly do I'm just I, I would be dumb I would be remiss uh, if I didn't focus on the fact that every that everybody else that's out there is taxed in, in this fashion going back. And I don't know when you say if we say yes. I I view it as it's already been said yes because everybody else is on that tax classification that I'm asking that I think that where there was an error and oversight to go back. And I'm, when I talked to Tracy, she said. Ironically, she's the one that sent me the letter in 2010 saying there was the other one. So, it, anyway, that's what I'm really asking. And really, when you're sorting this out, I, all the interests that are involved, I mean, you, I, I would be, it would be hard for me to stomach that everybody else is okay the way they are, but we have to continue to flip this uh, excess and taxation when everybody else around us is not. So. Right, and if it was just you, that would be one thing, you know. But that's yeah, I, just I don't know case. about the rest, other than I know about the five or six subdivisions. I know every subdivision in that area that, that we approved, that we collectively we approved out there. It's being taxed. Well, we'll realize this. We're not saying no, but we're not saying yes. Okay. We wouldn't be doing our job if we just said yeah. It's easier for us just to say yes to you because you're here. We have got to have a structure in place that's got to be thought through. It's got to go through the planning board because this is subdivision related. Right. And if we don't do that, we're not doing our jobs and we're not being responsible to our citizens. Right. 
So um, if you have a card, it would be great to get that information. Uh, I don't have your email, do you have your phone number? But um, if, then we can follow up with you, let you know kind of where we're at in the process, and then either have to come back or work together through you know, email so that um, we can go ahead and take care of this in a way that's most equitable to everybody. Yep. All right. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate it. So, Thanks for coming. Wonderful. Thank you. I, I wouldn't think. expect that this will take too long, but if anything, it's better to do it right than do it fast. I agree. Uh, Thank you for your time. You bet. Thank you. All right. Um, anything else for the good of the order? Okay. Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I did ask somebody to talk to them on our behalf. Thought it was better to uh, come from someone other than us. But I've I've got quite a few questions and um, I'm getting a lot more answers. Have you? No, I have not. No. Um, yeah, I. I not sure that we've been getting um, what we need from. I think we were well served. We, being Brother County, was well served by Jen and Tracy. Exactly. I think the loss of those two is a hit bigger than we have any idea mm -hmm. at this point, especially with next year being the calculating year. Um, and I, I don't think we've gotten the information, the guidance, um, the 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 service that we have, uh, that we've required from the state level. Well, and this is just a piece of the pie. It it's is not the whole thing. Yeah. And you know, it's a matter. No, and, and that'll be a discussion on Wednesday with you guys. Uh, but there's an awful lot of questions, and also, uh, you want to hear earlier, but we'll be meeting with some other county commissioners on Friday okay. and bringing up these lawsuits. Um, the one with the Supreme Court, let's be on Falcon County and how it has affected decisions that are quite different. Yeah, so we'll bring you some more information okay. from you and the board. On Wednesday, I'll try and get to you the information earlier so that you have some of that before the discussion. Okay, okay. So you, you've met with these other commissioners already? Are you really no, just got a couple of emails and started some conversation strings. And uh, okay. yeah, this is, this is hit Bruce and Clark County pretty hard in Dog County as well. Mm -hmm. So we're not alone. Um, I think the percentage that it's hit us is higher because we're smaller mm -hmm. and because we have so much development. But this this is a one side of the issue. So well, and not just the fact that we can have the two. We have a very big kit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And those prices for lot haven't really come down all that much. So that's a whole other element. So, um, anything more? Do you have any questions on that subject? Any more? No, I've got my own notes that I've got to do some research on, but nothing that can be answered here. I don't believe so. Okay. Um, the only other thing I wanted to, to say publicly is we have a number of department heads who have turned in claims for expenditures in fiscal year 14. There were a minimum of two memos and two all not finally. A matter uh, two memos sent out that said, you know what, you have to have your claims for last fiscal year in by July twenty fifth, almost a month ago. Tammy has processed a few more today, she's not processing any more after five o'clock today, and I support her on that. I do too. It's August eighteenth. Mm -hmm. We have professionals, they need to act like professionals and get their claims in on time. Um, so um, also with that, um, I don't know if this is, we have asked for a number of things. Um, one is, this is another mileage request from Franklin uh, for mileage to come to commissioner meetings. He was told last time he proposed this that he needed to bring a budget sheet to justify the monies in the budget. I haven't seen anything on that. And this is also for, um, travel in May and June last fiscal year. So um, I also got a fearful over lunch 
about a commissioner getting mileage. People are not happy about that. So um, I think that's it. And um, anything else? I don't think so. All right. With that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. And um, what's that pen? I think this is Anne's pen. Mm -hmm. Yeah.